Mr. Nick Smith. Mr. Chairman, I firstly want to say that that member's comments about Pamari really does highlight the contrast between the government's view of social housing and the Labour opposition. Because of, if Pumari is the flagship for state housing in Labour's mode, they are very much in the past. That is a community renowned for gang violence, renowned for murders, renowned for bad social and educational achievement. And what Labour wants to do is to lock in that failed state housing model, and I say shame to them. If Pumari is what Labor stands for, thank goodness they're not the government. Now, the key issue at stake in this bill, of which there is a difference between the government and Labor members, is the issue of reviewable tenancies. And at heart is a position by the government that says that social housing is for the period of need as compared with an opposition that says that social housing is for life. And the challenge I've got for Labour members is this. Nine years of the best economic times in a century, and at the end of that period, there were 4,000 people sitting on Housing New Zealand waiting lists. The idea that you can build your way out of the demands for social housing is flawed. Because while Labor will champion the cause of the existing tenants of state houses, we need to balance that with the needs, the high needs, of those 4,000 odd people sitting on waiting lists. And so the real question for this House and this bill is this. Those 4,000 people sitting on waiting lists, do they have a greater right to the government's investment in social housing than those existing tenants, 5,000 of whom are on a market rent? 5,000 of whom are on a market rent. So what Labor members are saying, those that are earning sufficiently to not be eligible for an income-related rent, have got a greater right, have got a greater right that to a house than those families who are overcrowded, those families in high need. Now, the idealists on Labor's benches say, don't worry, you can just build a whole lot more houses. And I say to them, they had nine years to make that work, and they did not. And that is why the government needs to focus its social housing on those families of greatest need. And I stress to the House, 5,000 state house tenants on market rents, the government in its budget saying we're going to have 1,000 in the first year, 2,000 in the second year, really shows how moderate and sensible this policy is. Do members, and I challenge the next Labor Speaker to get to their feet and to say the Labor Party stands for a state house for life and for that house being occupied by people on high incomes. I've got a guy in my constituency who's the captain of a fishing vessel. He earns over $100,000 a year. He occupies a state house. Members opposite say he has got a right to stay in that state house as long as he wants while we've got other families in far higher need on the waiting list. I say they're wrong. I'm proud of the changes that are made in this bill. If we are serious about addressing the social issues in New Zealand, the health issues associated with poor housing, then we need to make sure that our investment of $16 billion in state housing is used by those with the highest need. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. I call the honourable member Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, if it's not enough that the respected public health uh, academics at Otago University condemn this policy and say that there's a public health risk by Nick Smith uh, announcing with fanfare that he wants to see 3,000 state house tenants kicked out of their homes as a matter of government policy. If it's not enough to consider the public health risk, then let the Minister consider the words of the Productivity Commission 
who are his intellectual mentors. They are his intellectual Bible, their report on.